My name is Michael Hall. I'm, um, I'm from Edmonton, Alberta originally, but I've been here in Vancouver for uh, about 15 years or so. Long enough to call it home. I do commercial photography. I do portraiture. Uh, I recently covered the election and I am also producing art. I guess, uh, I guess I do a lot of different kinds of picture taking. Well, I suppose initially I just sort of found myself attracted to like really gross plastic. I just couldn't help but look at it and want to photograph it. And I think over, you know, years of doing that, I'd collected this, this grouping of images and I just thought it was a really beautiful material. Um, the way it catches the wind sometimes, the way it's, I don't know, the way it's uh, like a, a unnatural material that's supposed to be really pristine and beautiful and clean. And then I'd always find it in these gross contexts and I thought it looked organic and beautiful. And I decided that it was an interesting concept to have us, or humans, wearing what is essentially garbage and dressed in it. And I decided that I wanted to do a series of images that explored that idea. but. I didn't want it to just be uh, like a fashion shoot. I wanted there to be a bit more story behind it, and a bit more intention in terms of you know, what it means and how it reflects our own relationship with waste. I'm trying to express our relationship with a material that is produced industrially, not necessarily a natural thing, and yet we've become completely dependent upon it or interdependent. I mean, it would almost seem impossible as a human being in this day and age to live without it. I mean, everything, the camera, your clothing, your car, your house, our food to a lot of extent, or certainly the way it's delivered, it's all intimately related to plastic. So yeah, I guess I got interested in, in the idea that can we live without it? Like it's, it's almost impossible to think of, of human life without it at this point. So do we need it? Are we dependent upon it? Maybe. And then how does that reflect our our day-to-day -day lives? And I guess that when I had that idea in my, in my mind, uh, having people dressed in it and living in it and sleeping in it and wrapped in it sort of became like the next logical step for the metaphor, right? Like, we're not necessarily that far off it. We should care because of the monumental quantities that we're producing the tons of energy that goes into producing it, um, the resources, obviously oil-based, that are required to produce it, and then just the waste that we, that we make as a result of it. It's all based on our, our choices of how we operate, how we uh, live our lives, and what we feel is a priority. And at the moment, uh, producing waste is not, not producing waste is not a priority. The Western world is extremely good at hiding garbage. You know, that's, that's one thing we're good at. We take it, we concentrate it, we move it to a place where you can't see it. And I think that part of the reason why this project is interesting to me is because it's, it's out in the open. We see more of it. We're in bed with plastic. It's like, it's not simple. It's not like we can just shut it off. Like our lives are entangled with it. That's, that's the whole thing with the project. So how can we come up with ways that, we're, um, that we can change that relationship? Because it can't stop. And I'm not proposing that it stops. I'm just proposing that we become aware of it and start making some changes in our priorities so that we can deal with it. Once Science World decided that it was a cool project and they wanted to display it, I had this challenge of having to produce the thing. So uh, <laughs> I had to get some money together and um, so I partnered with uh, a group called Pondera FM, which is uh, um, an East, East Van group that uh, supports other artists. And with DE Radio, uh, they throw uh, great music parties, that sort of thing. 
and uh, they wanted to support Entanglement to help get some production money together. So what we did is we ran this Indiegogo campaign for 21 days. The community really came together to support the project at that point. I mean, tons of people donated. We ended up raising close to $5,000 through that process, which was awesome. Well, in closing, I would say, um, come on down to Science World and check out this exhibit. We're gonna, I have uh, six giant photos on display there, uh, as well as the costumes themselves. So you can see what they look like in the pictures and then actually see what they were made of and really get intimate with them there. It's a cool opportunity. Uh, the show opens on July 16th and it'll run the duration of the summer.